Oh man, are we are we are we live? I think we are. I think and and by we, I mean me apparently. Welcome everybody for joining. I crashed the party today. Typically, you have my colleague Eric Hanchett with us. Uh he's he's off today. He's relaxing. R&R is important. He's doing his own thing today. So you have me. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Michael Leando. I'm a senior developer advocate on the AppSync team. And I'm I'm just pumped to have this, this moment with you all today because we're going to have some fun. Now here on the front end, what is it called? Front end dev mobile hour. We like to talk about front end things and how you could integrate those experiences with AWS. But before we dive into all of that, I have a quick question. How are you all doing today? Where are you at? Go ahead and post in the comments. Let me know that you're here. Let me know that uh, you're, you're checking out the stream and you're here to have a good time because I am. I am fully caffeinated and I just want to take a moment to say hello and thanks for taking the time. You could be anywhere and you're here with me. So what do we have today? Oftentimes, we like to talk about things like Next.js, React, uh, JavaScript ecosystem, what is the latest, latest Twitter rage that people are talking about? And how can we incorporate some of those experiences with AWS? It's a good time. But I am here to say that there is a new upcoming feature from the AppSync team, AppSync, Amplify, and CDK team. I should give credit where it's due. Where we have not an L1 construct, not an L2 construct, but an upcoming L3 construct uh, that'll feature a whole bunch of goodness that we're going to be taking a look at. But um, but yeah, this is going to be a great time. I want to go and say a shout out to my friend, uh, GSK. Hey, welcome. Glad to have you here. Where are you, um, where are you hailing from today? I'm here in the Midwest, United States, and uh, we have Adam here already showing some love for the L3 constructs. So it's going to be a good time. Now, let me be, let me be up front. Okay. Let me be up front. When it comes to L3 constructs, I have some opinions, and that's not anything new to folks that work at AWS. But specifically, uh, I I'm weary of them. Okay, so we're going to be kicking the tires on this. We're going to be giving it the full run through to see just what we're in store for today. But um, but yeah, love the comments. Keep them coming in. Love the interactivity. I want to know your questions as we explore this. Okay, now let's maybe back it up a little bit. What the heck is an L3 construct? What is that stuff? If this is the front end hour, uh, we have to do some level setting, right folks? So when it comes to that, we have a, when it comes to the CDK, CDK is this way where you don't have to click through the AWS console, right? You can just sort of write your code in whatever language you prefer. I think there are like eight that it supports. Oftentimes it's going to be TypeScript if you're a front end developer. So you write your backend code in TypeScript, okay? That builds out some of these AWS services, all of the AWS services, in fact, because it wraps CloudFormation. So if you can do it in CloudFormation, you can do it in the CDK, the Cloud Development Kit. Now, there are levels to it, and I like to think of it like Pokemon, honestly. Um, this is really cool. Like, I'm in Midwest Iowa, and then we have India in the house. I love it. Absolutely love it. So we have, uh, I like to think of it like Pokemon. So so we have this cute, like little fiery Charmander, right? Um, Charmander is going to be our L1 construct, okay? It's a direct mapping between CloudFormation and the CDK. So as verbose and expressive as you can write it in CloudFormation, you can do that in the CDK, okay? Now we have an L2 construct. This is going to be my man, Charmeleon, okay? Second evolution. Uh, you can do, you don't have to do as much. You don't have to write as much. You can have the ability to say, look, if I want an API, if I want a website, if I want a, a database, okay, go ahead and I'm just going to provide to you basic things that would typically change from my database, but all of those presets, all of those defaults, I don't want to have to handwrite those myself. So the L2 construct will take care of it. Awesome. Now, as a lot of us know, dare I say all of us, after Charmeleon, we have my main man, Charizard, right? We have Charizard in the house. This is going to be our L3 construct. And you're like, wait a minute, Michael, Charizard is awesome. 
So why do we have an L3 construct if you said you're kind of weary of them? Here's the thing. The reason why it's so awesome is because it's highly specialized, right? So if I have an L3 construct, typically I created that for my company or I created it for my specific project, okay? So I'm weary of them because oftentimes they're maybe too opinionated. But what if the team or the organization that made that construct is AWS and it's making it for everybody? And going a little bit further, teasing just a little bit here, folks. What if it also gave you the ability to still drop down to that L1 and L2 construct? It would be cool. It's like if Charmander knew Ember, right? And Charizard knows Fire Blast. I know I'm being super nerdy right now. Uh, it'd be like if I'm battling a Caterpie with my Charizard, I could still drop down and use that Ember. I know that's a super optimized and, and like crazy explanation because I'm throwing in Pokemon stuff. But uh, that's what we're going to be exploring today. I want to kick the tires on this, this construct, and I want to show you all what's going on. And in the meantime, I'll work on a better analogy because I think uh, Pokemon might not be the best one there. <laughs> um, any IDE for development of apps? Um, so we got a couple, right? We have a couple there. Great question. We have VS Code. Uh, that's what I'm going to be using today, in fact. We have some folks in the crowd that are probably some NeoVim users. Uh, please see yourselves out. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Please stay. Um, so you have VS Code, you have NeoVim, WebStorm, and then, of course, AWS. We like to bake all of our services ourselves, nothing ready-made with us. So we have uh, Cloud9 that you can use. But we are going to be using VS Code. I think it does well with community uh, extensions, packages, services, and it's just kind of friendly and nice to use. But that's what I would suggest. Let me share my screen here. Now, let's see here. Let's see here. Do we have a, uh, <laughs> I'm assuming you're a NeoVim user, Russ. Uh, let me know. Let me know if that's the case. Okay, so uh, share screen. There we go. And then we're going to go with, doo -doo -doo -doo. how about this one? So let's explore this with me, okay? So I love, I, I work on the AppSync team, right? I'm a developer advocate for that team. So I know it pretty well. Now, when it comes to creating these constructs, though, having an upcoming L3 construct is super, super cool. So let's see here. Let's say that I want to create a simple to-do list. That sounds feasible. So if I bump this up maybe a couple times for us, not too many, and I'm over here. Here's what we're looking at, okay? So I want to create this to-do. What does it look like? I'm not using the Amplify CLI. Okay? I'm not using Amplify Studio. Those are two other ways of creating a App Sync API, a GraphQL API. But for me, I want to go ahead and say, in this case, with this L3 construct, I have my stack. And this is pretty much what I'm working with right here. This is the gold. Create a new Amplify GraphQL API. We're going to call it a to-do app. We might as well just, as we're coding, we're going to steal this exact example. Uh, we're going to give it a definition. Definition is essentially, hey, where is this GraphQL schema? I can work with that. In this case, we have a to-do app. But what is cool here is that with this L3 construct, this is the first thing that is kind of amazing. We have a type of to-do, awesome, that's regular GraphQL stuff, but then we have this at model directive. We have at auth directives, right? That's Amplify stuff. That's not app sync. And what those essentially say, that at model direct, uh, directive, says automatically create the associated DynamoDB table for me. And at auth says, go ahead and make sure that any created resolvers, meaning I don't have to write them, will automatically have the ability to do full create, read, update, and delete operations. And they can be protected by a GraphQL, or I'm sorry, by a Cognito service. We're gonna dive into that as we get further along, but we have some, some combos in the chat. And I always like to say, 
um, you know, welcome. Even though I'm smack talking Neo Vim, I, I say that because it intimidates me, right? It's like, it's a, it's the typical conditioning, right? It's like, if I'm going to talk about it, it's because I can't do it. I don't know how I can, I can use some AI service to exit Vim. And that's pretty much the extent of what I can do. So you, you're, you're a 10X developer above me, right? Um, but yeah, um, some folks love NeoVim. Some folks like Vim. Teach me your ways. Honestly, teach me your ways. I want to be cool. I want to look cool on stream. <laughs> so um, let's let's kind of go down here a little bit. And then, you know, I'm, I don't like reading too much documentation. So once we get done with this, we're going to open up our editors. We're going to try things out. And the goal is maybe we can go ahead and get a an API deployed to AWS and start testing out in the console just to make sure it's all there. I think that would be cool. There's our goal for the stream, right? So uh, it looks like in this example, did I, did I skip over anything? Right, multiple related models. This is also something you can do. In this case, we have a blog and a blog has many posts. You can see that we have this directive right here, has many and belongs to. Super cool. Again, this is stuff that if you had to write this out in AppSync syntax, pure AppSync syntax, and I have videos that showcase how to do that. But if you had to do that by hand, it's time consuming. It's error prone. One, you, you have to do it yourself. And I never like doing things myself. If I can have the backing of AWS automatically generate this stuff for me, right? It's like swoon. You got me. You got me. In addition, authorization modes on here. As some of you know, when it comes to AppSync, you have, I think it's like five different ways that you can authorize an API. You have an API key. You have OIDC. You have, you can do a Lambda and just authorize things with your own custom business logic. You have, um, what else, Cognito. And I'm probably forgetting something there. But yeah, those are the main ways. And then you can, of course, assign your user pool. User pool is necessary because we have, oh, yes, AWS IAM. Thank you so much. I had, um, you guys are quick with the helps today. Good, because I'm going to be typing and I need your, I need your help. Because uh, I imagine that I'm going to be making some goofs so I can have eyes on screen. That would help me out. Um, and then we have this next section here, right? We have these directives. These directives are coming from Amplify. If you use Amplify CLI and maybe you were like, hey, this is great how I can define my API. I just wish I had more control. I just wish I could dive down one level lower into the CDK, but I don't want to give up those cool directives. That's what we're, that's what we're solving today. Okay. Quick question coming up here before we dive in. Does AppSync still generate VTL resolver templates or does it now generate JS resolvers? Excellent question. I think as of now, and again, this is upcoming, so we're going to have to take a look. I think as of right now, it's VTL resolver templates that you can still access in the console and manipulate to your liking, I think. Now, once we get this deployed, we'll see just what's being done under the hood. But as some of you know, you can write your code using um, using JavaScript resolvers. You can use them in TypeScript resolvers and transpile it to JavaScript. Check out my channel for more info on that. But for what Amplify is generating, I believe it's still VTL. But we'll take a look. OK. Um, Oh, and then you were clarifying, does does Amplify do it? Okay, but yeah, you get it, you get it. All right, my man Alex. Alex, what's up? I was just chatting with you on uh, on Twitter. Good to see you. Uh, let me know if you're going to reInvent. And in fact, if anybody's going to reInvent, hit me up because I can give you the insider scoop on all the parties and we can have a good time at the Vegas Sphere and all that good stuff. Uh, drinks on me. I'm just kidding. Drinks on Bezos. Um, so let's continue along here. This is something that um, I think is actually kind of cool. You can import a GraphQL schema from files. So instead of having it all inline, which is perfectly fine, uh, you probably want to, as your schema gets bigger, right, put it inside of its own GraphQL file. But what surprised me is that we have this like from files. And maybe you can do this in the L2 construct, but in this case, you can sort of concatenate them by having a to-do in one file and just list out one other file. Pretty cool. And then we get into the API references. 
yada, 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 right? Let me go ahead and grab this link and we can just have that so that you folks can nerd out on it. And um, we just sort of list that there for you all. So let me put that on the screen. I don't know why I put that on the screen. Nobody's going to sit here and type that out, but copy it, right? Um, you know, jot it down, constructs.dev slash packages. And then the main thing is going to be this uh, AWS Amplify GraphQL API construct package. You'll find it, but just something that you see in there is uh, it's going to be super handy. Now, I can only read through documentation for so long, right? Until my eyes just start going crazy. I need to get hands on. I'm a, I'm a builder. And that's what we're going to be doing today. The goal, if you're just tuning in, is for us to have the ability to deploy essentially a to-do app uh, with full CRUD functionality, protected with an API key, and test it out. Here's the important thing. I want to get to the point where we can test it out in the console. Now, I'm going to have to shut up because I've been talking for like 20 minutes now, and I'm cutting it into my dev time. But if this is as easy as they claim it to be, then we might still be good here, folks. Let's see. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, Alex, let me know if you're if you're going to reinvent. I definitely want to hang out with you. It's always good to always good to see you. While I'm doing that, what am I going to do here? What are we doing? Opening up my terminal. This is the extent of like my terminal here, right? So we're going to make a directory. We're going to call this um, you know, mobile hour to do. All right, so we got that. Uh, we're going to CD into that project. And now let's go ahead and create our CDK application. So MPX, uh, AWS CDK, might as well throw in an at latest since they're always updating some stuff. And we're going to say that the language is going to be TypeScript. Should be good here. Now, eventually, I'm going to have to log into my AWS account. I should have done that ahead of time. But that's OK. I feel pretty baller because I got uh, SSO set up on my account. So now like I'm, I'm one of the cool kids. All right. Uh, VS Code, there we go. And we're going to need to install this package, right? Now this opened up on the wrong screen for me. So let me bring this over here for us. There we go. And we got some love from Germany. This is like why I love the internet, right? It's like, I'm this lonely guy. I live by a cornfield in Iowa. And then we have India in the house, Germany in the house. And, uh, and that's pretty cool. Real-time technology. Speaking of real-time, use AppSync. There we go. Shameless plug. Um, we're going to bump this up. Now, what do, we, what do we need here? I need to look at that documentation one more time, right? How do we import this thing? Um, and it looks like it's this construct right here. Got it. Going back over to our code, we might as well get that going front and center. So I'm going to say npm i, throw that construct in there. And is that all we needed? Looks good. Looks good. Now, how I like to construct things, and if you catch me on YouTube and you see me developing these applications with CDK, um, I hope you've liked and subscribed. No, what I meant to say is you know that I don't like to use classes. This is just a me thing. I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm not saying it's even the best way, uh, but it's my way. And it gives me a better mental overhead of what's going on because I work in uh, TypeScript on the front end, TypeScript on the back end, and I oftentimes don't use classes. So what I'm gonna do is leave this blank for now. We're gonna create our API file. And I'm gonna say this file is gonna be called um, in an API directory. And we're just going to say this is appsync.ts. Awesome. Now, I'm going to be flipping back and forth between the documentation because, again, we're kicking the tires and we want to see what this experience is like when you first set it up. So if this is the core of our API right here to right uh, here. Awesome. We're going to grab this and we're going to stick this inside of a function called um, create amplify app. So something like this, right? Const create uh, amplify API. It's gonna be a function. It's gonna take in a couple of things that I know off the bat. 
Uh, you can see that Code Whisperer is here. Shout out to Code Whisperer for helping me out. And I'm pretty much just going to paste all of this. Now, maybe I don't need this return right here. I can say this is going to be my const um, amplify API. There we go. And then at the very bottom is when I can return this. All I've done so far is just copy what's in the documentation over to this application. Now, a couple of things I do have to clean up, right? Instead of stack, anywhere we're mentioning stack, I'm going to say this. And instead of a blog app, this is going to be our to-do app. Right. Now we don't, I'm, my style isn't to have um, everything in line. We could, but let's be, you know, a little bit better. Let's, you know, let's show some class, pun intended, because I don't like classes. And, uh, and let's put this inside of its own file. I got my man from, um, uh, or man, I don't know, um, hello from Nigeria. I, um, I took a 23 and me test and it showed me uh, two crazy things. One, it showed me that I am 50% uh, Nigerian. What's up my brother? Um, and then it also showed me that I have a, a long lost sister that lived a mile and a half away from me. And it was super cool. We connected, this was like two years ago. Uh, we just connected. And we've been having a great time. She's older than me. And she, now I have an older sister that will never let it down. But 23 and me, I'm Nigerian. You're from Nigeria. What's up? And uh, it just makes me super happy every time I meet another Nigerian. Okay. So we need to use VS Code in here to help us out with some imports. So let's bring this in. Um, and then what else do we need here? We have this definition. We might as well use some IntelliSense to bring that in. Uh, user pool, we're not going to be adding Cognito. We can do that another time. And then cool thing is that the default is actually seven days. So we don't even need this right here. There we go. If we're using an L3 construct, right, you need to might as well just use the defaults that come with it. All this post business. Uh, not a fan. So we're going to say amplify GraphQL definition and then from files. There we go. And now we need to list out the files that we have. Now, again, if you've seen my content, uh, you've seen this stuff, you know, a million times before. You see how to create an amplify application and things like that. Um, did I mess up here? This should be, this is going to take in a scope. So when we call this, it's going to take in a scope. And um, it's also going to take in some props. Now, this scope is going to be of type, uh, what is it, like a construct? Yeah. Then the props are going to be of type, and we'll just call this our Amplify API props. Cool. You can define those real quick up here. Copy this. And then that way we can get some of these red squigglies taken away. Equal, empty object, awesome. And then this is actually going to be our scope right here. Cool. Now we have to define this um, this file, right? So we have this file here, and what I'm going to say is that it is. What can I do? Is it path.join? Help me out, folks. Uh, oh no! Help me out, Code Whisperer. Yeah, there we go. Path.join. Uh, you're probably going to gripe at me because we don't have path installed. There we go. Uh, I don't like how you imported that. Import everything as path from path. Awesome. Uh, but what don't you like here? I thought we had everything set up. Here's our definition. Uh, are we not closing it? Cool. Um, authorization modes. I get a red squiggly there because I'm missing a comma. Ha ha ha. I can dev. Cool. Um, oh man, Rosie, welcome. What's up? Good to have you here, my guy. Uh, always good to see you. We have a we have a cool crowd here. We're streaming on uh, Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. So you know, say what's up. It's a good time. Hope you're doing well. Uh, are you going to reinvent? That's what I want to know. Because it'd be cool to hang out with you. Okay, so we have this up here. Uh, what do we need to do though? We need to export this. And the reason why we got to export it is because we're not using it in this file. Uh, we're going to use it 
back in our stack, right? So we can say, hey, bring you in. And I should probably use VS Code to update you, or import you, rather. Got it? And then we can pass in the things that we need. Uh, it needs a scope, and that's going to be this. And then any props, which is just an empty object, is going to be just fine. Cool stuff. Now, this is expecting something, um, this schema, right? It's expecting the schema. And the idea is that I don't need to worry about creating a DynamoDB table, OK? Because when I use that app model directive, it's supposed to allegedly create it all for me. And this is what we're going to be trying to verify today. And then we'll look things up in the console. Um, Hello from US East One. Awesome. I don't know if that's like an AWS joke, if you're really from uh, Virginia so or North Virginia. So I won't pry, but I do appreciate the joke. Definitely. OK. So what do we have next year? Like, if I'm just like getting my own thinking hat on, uh, next up is to create this schema. Now, this is saying that we are going up a directory into a GraphQL directory, yada, yada, yada. Let's not, right? Let's just go here, say this is going to be our schema, that GraphQL. Cool. Well, back out of that, we'll fix this import just so we don't shoot ourselves in the foot. Now we can type this to do. Now I'm a little rusty when it comes to creating um, code using Amplify's directives. I've been using just plain Jane L2 construct AppSync for so long. But if I can remember, I think it's going to be something like this. And an ID is going to be a type ID. Exclamation mark means that it's required. And we can say from here, Every to do is going to have a name, a type string. Got to have that in there, a description, a type string. And then it also needs a, um, hmm, maybe a completed status. We can just say status. And um, oh, if it's a Boolean, see, this is like my front end conventions, right? Is completed is probably what I would do. And then that'll be a Boolean. Awesome. <clears throat> so we have this. We don't have any auth rules. Should we have auth rules? No, because then we need Cognito in place. And I don't want to set up Cognito in this session. I think I'm biting off a big chunk of change already. Now, here's where I get leery, folks. Uh, I have my API. It is being called in here. Did I, what do I need to do? Did I give this, in, do I need to give it a name? API name? And then just for the sake of having a props, we can just call it props.api name. Now this is being passed in here. We'll say that API name is going to be a type string. Uh, note that we're in TypeScript land, not GraphQL, so hence the lowercase string. And now this is going to complain because like, yo, you didn't give me an API name. Um, mobile hour to do app. I swear, Code Whisper is coming in through strong today. I love it. I love it. All right. We have that. Before I check out the documentation, like mental check, right? Let's just kind of pause and, and assess where we're at today. Let me save all also. We have our API. We put at model inside of our schema. Um, this is supposed to create everything for us meaning our database and all of our resolvers. Uh, what do I need to do next before I deploy this? Because honestly, it's kind of thrown me that I wrote so little code and it's going to have such a big impact. I can't think of anything. I think just to be on the safe side, can I like CFN output some of this stuff? And is it new? I got to have the new in there. And let's see here. This is going to take in oh, code whisperer, get it. Uh, that value is wrong, but that's OK. We can work with that. This value is going to be our. Um, and then like, here's the cool part. It's supposed to surface some of the L2 properties, right? So if I take this and I say this is my const amplify API, 
then I could allegedly bring this down here. Whoops, bring this down here and say, this is my Amplify API dot. And what do we have, right? We can explore all of these properties that are being surfaced. Do I want to add a DynamoDB data source? So I can drop down to the L2 constructs on all of these. Um, here's API key, GraphQL URL. What else is here? Real-time URL? Resources. What happens if I get into resources? Um, boom. L2 construct, folks, right there. That's pretty cool. CFN resources. What if I do that? L1 constructs. It's that easy to drop down. This is kind of blowing my mind right now. Okay. Amplify API. Dot, and then we just wanted the API key. And then we also would probably want the URL. Uh, what are you complaining about? API key, are you undefined? Oh, because there might not, it doesn't know like we actually set up auth on our API. So we're gonna say do do, um, no API key. Also done here. And then this is gonna be our API key, right? And then this will be my API URL. So far, so good. Now, coming down here, API and then GraphQL URL. Supposedly, when we deploy all of this, uh, this should output those uh, those details inside of my terminal. Oh, I always get nervous at this point. Uh, what do we do? We I first need to log into my AWS account. Sorry, folks, I didn't do it ahead of time. AWS SSO. Uh, util, shout out to Ben Kehoe for the util here. And we are going to say login. Uh, codes do look the same. So let's hit continue. And then I know I'm doing this off screen, but I am just logging into my account. No need for all of you nosy Nancy's to see that. And we succeeded. Great. And the reason why that is helpful is because I can do MPX AWS CDK uh, deploy. Oops. And then the profile that I like to use for these examples is my Focus Otter Sandbox account. A lot of you use the default. That's cool. Whatever works for you. Uh, but we're going to use this. We blew up. Why do we blow up? Uh, do, do, do. At least one auth config is required, but none were found. Convert auth config to AppSync auth. Did I put in a uh, an auth config? Let's see here. It's not in my schema, so it must be somewhere in here. And auth config authorization mode. Oh, this is required. Wait, there it says it's not required. Okay, like I said, we're kicking the tires. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, we'll just do a, what are some of the properties that you need? Um, oh, it's because expires is required. Okay, expires. And then I think it's a CDK that duration that I need. I just type in duration, got it. And then is it dot days? I'm really just kind of relying on IntelliSense here. Uh, let's say seven and that'll quiet that so let's try it again and hopefully that was it a uh, quick question while that is doing its thing is this online or offline ide this is um what is this we are offline i'm not like we're not on the internet with our with this ide uh, we're doing all of this locally is probably the better way of saying it. And then I'm streaming to all of you lovelies through the power of the internet. Let's take a look at what is being built here though. So we have, oh, I hate that the table, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say no, and then I'm just gonna make this table like bigger. So I wanna be able to read it so we can see what's actually being deployed to our account. Because the nice thing is that it does all this stuff for us, but we're still responsible for it, right? We can still go in, make tweaks, et cetera. So what do we have? Uh, we have, looks like some standard deployment policies being set up, cool. 
nothing crazy there. Um, all this S3 stuff, I'm assuming that's just um, config so that it can manage it for us, kind of like CDK Bootstrap. Uh, this looks fine. I don't see anything about AppSync, which is kind of throwing me right now. CDK Bucket. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So here's our to-do app. Looks like it's putting the assets inside of an S3 bucket, which is good to know. Do I want to deploy these? Let's say yeah, because honestly, reading that isn't the clearest for me. So we can just hop into the AWS console and see what's going on. Quick note from our sponsor. There we go. We're not sponsored. AWS just pays me. So. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a moment. It looks like five, you know, 17 assets are being deployed to AWS. Okay, cool. While this is going, please, 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 does someone have a dad joke for me? Like it's Tuesday. I've, I've been telling my kids the same jokes for five years now, um, and they're just not laughing like how they should. If you have a dad joke in the audience, and you would like to share that with all of us. I would appreciate it. My kids would appreciate it. Heck, my, my dog would appreciate it. Um, yeah. Oh, we we have one. What is what is this? Okay. Now is it bonk or is it ha ha bonk? What goes ha ha bonk? And then the butum cha is a man laughing his head off. Cause get it? Because it's Halloween and his head fell off. My wife told me, she goes, um, you know, why did the chicken cross the road? And I, I thought about it, you know, there's all the silly answers. And she I go, why? <laughs> and she said, but but because. And I was like, <laughs> I was like <laughs> that's it, folks. The stream is stream is done. We're we're done. We're not streaming anymore. <laughs> oh man. Is it going? I can tell a joke about pizza, but it's a little cheesy. I love it. I love it. I could tell you about a joke about construction, but I'm still working on it. <laughs> okay. Um, we deployed, right? Thank goodness, because we were we, we were gonna go down a dark tunnel there. We deployed. We have an API key. We have an API URL. Uh, those were given to us by that CFN output, right? In addition. Uh, we also have some S3 locations. It's like, hey, where is this stuff living? Where is my schema living? Right? Where is my API endpoint? And then it also logged out some additional details, which I definitely appreciate. We're in US East 1. That's my AWS profile. Let's look this stuff up in the AWS console, okay? So we were here. And there we go. Let's fix that. I know that's tiny. I'm going to bump the size up in just a little bit here. Uh, but where do I need to go? Uh, focus Otter. This is where I feel super cool because I have my AWS accounts listed here and I can just pick which one I want to log into. Took me way too long to configure uh, SSO, meaning I should have done it years ago. Uh, in actuality, the time to do it took me, I don't know, three hours. So we're here. If we go to the AWS console, boom. Uh, AWS App Sync Console. You can see I have some other stuff going on. Mobile Hour To Do App. Great. Now, I want to first check out the schema because if it created everything for me, I want to see what it created based off of that limited amount of information that I gave it. So here is we have our create to do input. Great. Delete to do. We have all of the enums listed right there. Booleans, this is actually super fleshed out. This is what Amplify gives you if you use the Amplify CLI. But you're, you've always been inside of their ecosystem, uh, which has been great until you needed more. So having this plus the CDK, honestly, is, is super, super helpful. And like, I'm just scrolling here, right? This is, we're going on 200 plus lines of code, including subscriptions that were created on my behalf. Hold on, what did I write? 
I wrote uh, six lines of code. And from that, I had 229 lines derived for me. That's pretty cool. All of my queries, let's take a look here. Okay, so this is typical like Amplify style here. So to answer that previous question, uh, if I can find it, just so that folks know what I'm talking about here. Uh, do, do. Okay, does AppSync still generate VTL resolver templates um, or is it now JavaScript? It looks like if this is a pipeline resolver, uh, it is still VTL. Now, let me think here. Does that matter in this case? Because if what I want is fully fleshed out like this, does it matter that it's VTL? I wonder. I wouldn't think that I would need to come in here and change anything. And if I did, if I wanted to write a JavaScript resolver, I can drop down to the L2 construct and do just that. If we have time, we should probably test that out. Okay, so there's a schema. Schema gives us everything. Let's test things out. I want to create some to-dos. Do, 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 do. Where am I going? Queries. And let's just make some room here. Can I bump this up one time for the one time? Yes, I can. All right, I want to, let's, let's take it easy, baby steps, right? I want to list out um, the to-dos and look at the fields that I have here. Okay. Uh, the ones that I created, ID is completed, name, description, but then I also have created at and updated at, which is super helpful. Uh, so when I go to list them, let's say I want the IDs and that, my query, uh, what do I get? Unauthorized, uh, not authorized to access list to do's on type query. Why is that? Is my, oh wait, it's with an API key, right? Yeah. Why am I not authorized? If I look at my schema, at model, I know why. I know why. This goes back to me saying, uh, one, this goes, no, no, no. This goes back to me saying, hey, um, can you all help me out? And and I'm going to say, shame on you. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. At auth is the directive that we needed, right? Rewind the tape all the way back to when I said, do I need the at auth directive? And you were like, no, no. Um, what we need to do here is say, at auth, allow, uh, I'm going to say, no, at auth rules this is all amplify syntax so you can look it up in the amplify docs uh rules takes in an array and then it takes an object for the specific type of rule that you want to apply and for here if i just say allow public and hit save you can see the formatting took place which means that the syntax is valid and then if i come over here and redeploy i'm getting excited because all the syntax is coming back to me uh this is going to deploy cool is anything going to change in terms of build stuff it doesn't look like it it's just going to be a quick authorization acknowledgement uh, so that'll do its thing while that's deploying what kind of comments do we have coming in boo doesn't matter but aws is recommending the best practice to shift to javascript oh it's boo as in like not not from the jokes boo but yes we are saying that uh, best practice to shift to JavaScript. Now, let me challenge that for a little bit, right? Uh, it is saying it is a best practice for customers to write their resolvers in JavaScript. But if you write them in JavaScript, at the end of the day, AppSync understands JavaScript because it knows how to turn that into VTL. I'm just, hear me out, hear me out. All I'm saying is that if Amplify is creating the VTL for you. I mean, does, is that best practice not being followed? You know, it's kind of a gray area, right? We're creating the VTL, we AWS are creating the VTL on your behalf. Now, if you were writing the JavaScript yourself or if you were writing VTL yourself, yeah, I would say, hey, you know, move that stuff to JavaScript or TypeScript. But, you know, we're, I can't say that we're going against best practice. Uh, we got monoliths in Java. Yeah, I mean, 
Java is uh, back in my day. I was doing Java Spring Boot in an enterprise where we worked with uh, Jenkins and all of that good stuff, and it just was my heart hurt. Right, that's the best way I can explain it. My heart hurt, and then I came over to the JavaScript side. Let's try this again. We have an API key. Uh, we are going to say, give me those to-dos. Now this API key, if I run this, still got it, folks. Still got it. Awesome. We're able to get no data back, but the items is an empty array, which means that the database should be connected. And we're going to take a peek. What do we got? 13 minutes left. Oh, we're good. We're good. We're going to take a peek here and see just what was happening. So let's create something else. Let's create, instead of a query, let's create a mutation. And we are going to create a to-do. And, and check this out. Like It's all being created for us. So I get stuff that I wouldn't even think to add, right? Conditions, descriptions, IDs. Uh, the input is going to be uh, the to-do, right? Uh, the to-do is give an example. Spell today of the CDK construct. Cool. Uh, for the ID, notice that it doesn't have an asterisk here. That's actually kind of important. It's letting you know, like, hey, this field isn't required. So I can give it an ID and it will take on that ID. Or I can leave it blank and it's going to be automatically created for me. No NPM, UUID package, et cetera. Uh, the name is going to be. Um, you know, give or walk through constructs. Got it. What I want to get back? Everything. I want to see and make sure that all of these are being created. Okay. Now, if I run this mutation, ha. we're doing good. We're doing good, folks. We have our data come back. Create to do. And check out that created at, right? I get my timestamp. I get a unique ID. My mind is blown. My mind is blown. That's, this is so cool. I barely had to write any code. This is something, again, if you drop down to CDK, you were like maximum power. And then you had to realize that you just spent you know half a day getting your API set up. I can chat and have fun with you all and tell jokes. And I'm creating an API on AWS. And I'm laughing. Like, when was the last time, genuinely? Like, let's just step back for a second. When was the last time that we could do that? Okay, so we have this. Um, and now I'm assuming that if I just go to list out these items, check out my query again, there it is, right? The name and ID, because that's what I said I selected right here. We're good. Now, what does this, so this means that I must have a DynamoDB table that was created for me. If I go to DynamoDB and I go to my tables, uh, what do I have? Mobile dev is, I'm assuming what it was called? No. Uh, to do? Okay. So things to note, right? Things to note is that we have our to do, and it was prefixed with this random unique ID. That makes sense. And then we have none. And I'm assuming that that is because of the environment that we're in. I don't know. Let's clear some space here and explore this out. Uh, there we go. Give an example. Can I edit this item just so we could actually view it? Cool. We have our ID created at is completed just like how we did from GraphQL, except this time now we have a type name. Uh, this field isn't part of our schema, but AppSync is adding this to our table as an access pattern for us to query things on. Everything is going to be queried off of its ID as a sort key, but then the actual um, primary key is going to be a type name. And then for those of you that want to nerd out, nerd out about this, when you put them together, I believe it's called a partition key. Uh, let me know if I got those mixed up, though. 
Uh, I laugh when things go wrong. So I've always been laughing when writing APIs. You know, you get to a point where you just kind of laugh at yourself and, and you have to do it. It's like you become your own rubber duck and, and you just know how to just roll through the punches when things go wrong. But it sounds like you're on the right track to, to being a 10 Xer, like all the, uh, all the NeoVim users out there. Or I forget, are you, are you a NeoVim user? I forget which one you said. Hey, thanks very much for joining us, Enrique. Um, and I'm glad you appreciate the content. If you do, uh, you all know where to find me. You see my my name and my handle here. Hit me up on Twitter. I'm literally everywhere online at Focus Otter. So if you enjoy videos like this, my YouTube channel is filled with this kind of stuff. And if you like um, short form stuff, hit me up on Twitter. If you have comments, questions, etc., I appreciate it because it lets me know what you all look forward to going forward. So how are we doing on time now? Uh, we have seven minutes left. I'm not going to attempt to get Cognito set up in seven minutes, but let's explore something real quick. And this is just something that I want to make sure I leave you all with. And that is if we go back to AppSync and if we check out that mobile hour to do API, cool. In the settings is where you find all the goodness. Right, it's where you find your API ID. It's where you find your uh, GraphQL endpoint, etc. Now, we have our real-time subscription here, but where is that API key? There it is. So here's the API key to access the API. But what I like and what I want to show you is uh, X-ray. So, hmm, it's turned off here. Let me see if I can turn it on. I could easily like toggle the switch, but um, I don't want to, right? Let's keep it all in code. So we have our API. How do I, from the L2 construct, it has like direct access to X-Ray. I don't see that here. So I'm going to have to come down, say something like amplify API dot, and there is, I don't see it as a top level. So here's an example. I'm gonna to have to drop down, right? GraphQL API dot. And I don't see it. How do I get to like all of the L2 stuff? I don't wanna to spend too much time on this because I, one, I should probably read the docs. The thing that I I told you all that I'm gonna skip. Um, truly though, I don't see it here. So I'm gonna skip this for now. The goal of what I'm trying to show you is um, I want to enable X-Ray. So I'm going to save this out. X-Ray, in case you don't know, is how you observe basically your operations going to a data source and coming back. So if you have something like API Gateway using a Lambda function going to DynamoDB, which is very, very popular to do, uh, you also have to manage or deal with the fact that you're going to have a cold start involved. Right? It's just a, a way of life. But if I am going straight to the source, AppSync to DynamoDB, this should be fairly fast, right? Not hundreds of milliseconds. So let's run another query now that we have X-Ray enabled. Uh, yeah, it's on. So I'm going to run a query here. Uh, let's say that we're going to do our list to-dos. Boom. There it is. The query just ran. So I'm going to go back to my settings. I'm going to hit edit. And not that one, not that edit. This one right here, click edit. And I should be able to view that trace in X-Ray. Okay. Let's get the, let's get the dark mode going. So what do we have here? Nothing yet. If I run a query for everything, uh, nothing pulled up just yet. There we go. It had to take a little bit. So what are we working with here? We have our uh, last request that we just made. This is absent going to DynamoDB, right? What happened there? It was a post uh, and that response time is crazy to me, right? Uh, these are in seconds. I don't know why they're not in milliseconds, but um, you know, one, two, three, we're looking at 79 milliseconds. Crazy. If you were doing a Lambda, sometimes you have like 300 milliseconds just to make the request because it was a cold start. We don't have to worry about cold starts here. 
So not only is my application faster, not only is my application more secure because I don't have an intermediary layer on uh, Lambda, it is more cost effective because that's one less service that I have to worry about, right? And, and the benefits just kind of um, cascade all the way down. Anytime we have to remove business logic that we manage, then the world is a better place. Like a fairy gets its wings. It's great. But in any case, I think I think we're at time. I think this was a good kicking the tires experiment. And I appreciate all of you being here, joining me. Again, if you have any questions, my name is Focus Otter. Hit me up. We appreciate it. Sincerely, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I really don't have much, much more to say. Um, let me know in the comments if you did appreciate this content. I will relay that. If there's something else you want to see, I will let the uppers know, the powers that be. I'll let them know what was going on. Uh, but I appreciate the great job. I appreciate the kudos. I love hanging out with all of you. I'll try to crash the party next time. But yeah, until then, take care. Happy coding. Be safe out there. If you do the whole Halloween thing or if you just have good dad jokes, keep that going too. Talk to you later. Peace.